explosion! Today we're going to talk about the science of color, okay? And we're going to talk about some of the properties of color and light that are around us every day. You know, we take the fact that we can see color and light for granted, you know? We use color and light to basically explore the world around us. It gives us a sense. It gives us uh, the ability to tell the difference between a red light and a green light at a stop sign. It tells us the difference between a blue sky and a gray sky and a cloudy sky. phenomenon that's created by the ability of our eyes to detect part of the electromagnetic spectra, known as the visible spectrum. So here's our visible, here's our complete EM spectra, and it goes all the way from gamma, x-rays, UV, IR, microwaves, the radio waves that you hear on the radio, television, and then long radio waves. But jam-packed in the middle between the UV and the IR spectra is this very special band that goes between 400 to 700 nanometers in length. So that means the wavelength from peak to peak is very small, between 400 and 700. 700. Okay, and it's just a small fraction. It doesn't take up the entire thing, and we're actually very lucky that it is where it is. So the spectra, the visible spectrum, allows us to see color. So that's where your reds, your greens, your yellows, all of your colors are kept in that very small amount of wavelength. White light contains approximately equal proportions of all of those wavelengths that you saw in the spectrum. It has equal amounts of red, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Condensed together, that makes white light. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about light that's not pure. Okay? We're going to look at, talk about something like incandescent light, which is made up of disproportional amounts of light at different wavelengths. The light that's in our buildings, the light that's in your headlights of your car, the lights that are in your little LED flashlight, in the screen of your iPod, those are not considered pure light. Those contain disproportional amounts of green, yellow, and red light. Now if you guys look in front of you right now, you'll see you have a little black cylinder, right? And if you don't, you can share with your neighbor. Make sure you guys all have those, okay? Now what you have there is very similar to a prism, okay? So what that does is it takes in light, you can look up here at these lights, it'll take in that close to white light and it'll break it up into different bands. These gas discharge tubes contain an element in a vacuum. Okay, and when we apply an electrical current to it, we get a discharge of light. But this light is very specific, okay? This is not white light. When you look at these lights, when we turn them on and shut out all of the, the lights, you'll see a very specific diffraction of light. Because these, you'll see something very different than what you saw when you looked at the white light, or close to white light from up above. Our eyes can see light. They're a type of detector. And we can only see light that's in the visible spectrum. So that brings up an interesting question. How exactly are we able to see? I mean, it's a pretty special property of our eyes to be able to know that that color that you see here is red and know that that color up there on the screen is green. So how exactly does that process work? Well, inside of your eye, on the back of your retina, you have two types of proteins and two types of cells called rods and cones. There are three different types of cones, okay? You have a cone that perceives light that's in the lower end of the visible spectrum. You have cones that detect near the middle, and you have cones that detect up near the upper end. If you have a defect in one of your cones, the world starts to look a little different. Maybe you lose color of reds, greens, or blues. And without color, we're left with this. 
which is boring. boring. And just remember, whether you're in the lab or at home or watching a movie or whatever, color is all around us. It's in rainbows, and later tonight it'll be in your clothes.